Here to talk with us about all of our latest concerns when it comes to the COVID rules, epidemiologist Dr. Michael Minna. He's the chief science officer at, at EMED, a biotech software service company that enables authentication of at-home tests for public health reporting. Good morning. How are you doing? Doing very well. Good. Now, we know that you believe boosters for kids, that's the right move. But why is that important right now? Yeah, that's, uh, we're seeing pediatric hospitalizations increase. And in a country like ours that has an abundance of vaccines, as long as we have decided that they're not going overseas and that the best place for those vaccines is here, then getting these uh, into, the, into individuals who remain unboosted and still vulnerable to, to variants like Omicron uh, is, uh, is very important right now. You know, Dr. Bennett, so many people are confused about so many things. Hopefully you can sort some things out for us. Let's start with the CDC's new isolation guidelines. You have called them reckless because they do not require a neg negative test before you get out of isolation. A lot of people agree with you on that. But the CDC says that they don't ask for the test because people can still test positive for up to 12 weeks. And they can test positive, but they're no longer infectious. That's an important point to make. They can test positive, but they're no longer infectious. What do you make of their response to that? Yeah, that, that's exactly right. That's with PCR. And this is actually an argument that I've been making uh, for, for almost two years now, is that PCR as a technology is too sensitive and it can detect people long after they have been infectious. The appropriate tool in this pandemic to answer the question, do I need to isolate? am I infectious and a risk to my neighbors, is using a rapid antigen test because it only stays positive as long as you are infectious. So, But we uh, keep hearing, I, though, Mike, that the, but then you keep hearing that the antigen tests are not so reliable. Those at-home antigen tests are not reliable. Well, that's, a, that's been a, a misunderstanding because they keep getting compared to the PCR test. And so if you have a test that will only turn positive when you are infectious and you ask somebody to compare it to a PCR, which stays positive much longer than you are infectious, then of course you're gonna find a lot of individuals who are still positive on PCR, who are negative on a rapid home test, and that ends up in the eyes of the FDA and in the eyes of many uh, scientists who don't necessarily know what they're looking at. It looks like the rapid test is failing, but actually it's accurate to answer the question that we're mostly interested in, which is, Am I a risk to my neighbors and do I need to isolate? That's the first time I've heard that distinction. It's very interesting. Very so important. So on this question of risk of infection, infectiousness, if you take that antigen test at home and you get a line indicating you're positive, but it's a very faint line, is there wiggle room? Can you interpret the results in some way? Yeah, I would say that the... the the, the line, the, the interpretation that is, that is rock solid is if the line is very, very dark, you know that you have a lot of replicating virus in you. You know that you're likely very infectious. If as the line becomes very faint, uh, you could be at the beginning of your infection or you could be at the end. So that's where it becomes very important to have a second test that you can, that you can repeat, say 24 or 48 hours later to see if you're still positive. Some people might be on the way up. Some people might... Uh, be just clearing the virus at that point. So do you think, though, Mike, that we need to take the PCR and the antigen test to be sure to get the results on both cases? Uh, no, I, I don't. I think at this point in the pandemic, we know enough about these tests and the accuracy of the rapid test that we do not need to be using the PCR test because, uh, because it's so sensitive that we've now isolated Many, many millions and millions of Americans have been isolated just because they got a, a swab stuck in their nose two weeks after they needed to be isolated. And that led to them getting uh, a positive on a PCR. So we should really start leaving the PCR test to what it's best for, which is medical clinical diagnosis by a doctor in a, in a, in a hospital or a clinic, and allow the rapid test to be used for public health uh, to know, do I need to isolate and be able to take action that is meant for public health and not necessarily just for medicine. Are you huddling with the CDC on this? Because it's very confusing. We get one message, what you're saying, and the CDC is telling us something else. It's very difficult. Well, I've, I've, I've certainly spoken you know, to, to the CDC and, and others, and uh, I think that there continues to be 
uh, confusion around this, um, in large part because of how we continue to regulate the tests at the FDA. It leads to claims that are written on the box that aren't necessarily in line with how Americans actually are wanting to use the test. And that puts the CDC a bit in a box in terms of what they can recommend for Americans to use these tests for. All right, Dr. Michael Minna, we will keep following it. We appreciate your guidance on this uh, for today. Thank you very much.